company operating a cloud uh, outside of the USA in Australia, if they are more than 10% owned by the USA, or, or uh, is it something, something like that, then the Patriot Act has the right to be able to uh, intercept without warrant, without notification to customer or anything, data in that cloud. Now, that to me is a bit, you know, that's overstepping the bounds of, of, of the, 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 uh, the rights of the, the US to, to be able to intrude into my private or personal or, or my corporate data. Um, some people have said it's not an issue because there are international treaties that deal with, with interception and things like that. But I would much rather, if my data is going to be intercepted, and we do have a problem, I'd much rather deal with my own local authorities than try and get redress from the United States. Um, so I think it's important for other nations around the world that you can build these data sovereignty compliant uh, clouds without fear of, of that US ownership um, situation that you might come across with Amazon, and you might come across with Azure. I mean, the, the general manager of, of uh, Microsoft um, Azure in, in Europe said he could not guarantee that the data was not uh, susceptible to interception from, from the Patriot Act. So I don't want that. You know, you, one of the things John Dickinson says, uh, the, the SWIFT project technical lead, is you must always retain ownership of your data, no matter what. So it's that, that's the, the big important thing, impact on business, the business risk of, of having uh, clouds that, that you can't control or you can't, uh, you know, boundary off. Um, business examples of, uh, outside of the, uh, for the rest of the world, Cena.com in China, Mercado, Libre, down in Brazil, Korea Telecom, us, of course. Um, uh, we have a, a classic example. We have a legal firm um, that does legal forensics. They cannot use cloud that is in any way um, susceptible to any uh, yeah, yeah, I I anything outside of Australia. It has to be an entirely Australian-owned company. They're, they're very strict privacy laws in Australia. Um, so they can only use us, which is great. You know, and there's more companies like that. We have the, one of the business intelligence companies we have, they can only use an Australian-based, Australian-owned, Australian-operated uh, business, full stop. So I imagine the Indian government may have some... I, I'm not aware you're probably... More, they, uh, you, you know, it is, it, it's in the interests of, of your government to, to, to uh, maintain privacy and maintain those sort of rules as well. So, so to sum up, cloud is big. OpenStack is big. It is the hottest software project on the planet right now. Full stop. There is nothing... I, anyone name anything bigger? I don't know. Um, the other cool thing is, I mean, if you're not involved with it, I mean... You look at the list of companies that are, are doing it now, who's not involved with it? I mean, we had EMC join the other day. I, I, I can only think of Amazon. <laughs> um, but I guarantee you they've got a team sitting in there somewhere keeping an eye on it. Yeah. Guarantee you. Um, so it's having a global impact now. So get with it. Get on it. Let's do it. I think that's it. So... I'd like to have some questions, uh, I, I guess, because I, I, you know, I'd like get, to get feedback about what you might feel are, are things you'd like to raise with, with uh, an individual represent, rep representative on the, on the board of directors. So if you've got any questions, shoot them up. Yes. I also own this portfolio in Dell, uh, Dell India. So one of the things I want to know is that what is the aspiration of customers in Australia when you bid them or ask them? What are their pain points? Do they compare it with a closed source like v vCloud or Amigen? And how do you address them? Okay. The question was, what, typical customers in Australia, what are the pain points uh, and how are we addressing that? Well, I mentioned before the backyard syndrome. One of the things is, is um, uptake in Australia has been a bit slow. What we've tried to do is use private cloud to, to get on-premise, get people comfortable with cloud concepts. So uh, we, partnered with, we partnered with Piston Cloud first as a, uh, a, a, a 
quick and easy way to get a, a drop in um, private cloud deployment into enterprise so they could have a play with it, get used to it, get comfortable with it. The, the modus operandi from that is to encourage them to feel comfortable with that and, and draw them out into hybrid or hosted private. Um, that's probably the main pain point at the moment. If that answers your question, great. Hey, uh, this is Krish. Uh, my question to you as an individual member to the OpenStack board, what are you going to do to ensure transparency in board discussions? During the first board meeting, there were some tweets coming out talking about what is being discussed. Yep. And uh, there, was, there was some proposal to shut people down from talking about what is happening in the board meeting. Yep. And the second uh, board meeting at San Diego, there was not a single tweet or anything about what is being discussed. Yep. So how are you going to ensure that there is complete transparency uh, inside uh, the, uh, during those discussions? Because without complete transparency, this is not a real open source community project. Yes, so okay. what are you going to do for that? Okay, I understand. Very good question, indeed. Um, the, the question was about transparency of the board meetings and how we have had issues with that, and I, I, I absolutely accept that. Um, initially, um, I think that, uh, as I said, we're, we're in our infancy. We're, still, we're learning what's going on at the moment, and, and not everything's been done right, and I, I totally agree with that, um, that that first board meeting, uh, things were... were discussed in the executive session. Um, does everyone know what the executive session is as a board? We basically have to shut down any public uh, inter uh, interaction with it and just discuss matter with the board itself. Now, what we're trying to do at the moment is exclude that executive session. And this is uh, something that is, is a governance thing and a legal thing, is to exclude those executive sessions to matters of legal privilege. The, and I know that sort of um, might not satisfy people, but if, if it's, it's, it's like if I robbed a bank and, and I need to talk to my lawyer, it's the same sort of thing. You know, I have that right to legal privilege. It's, um, it's something I can't really quantify or explain, and I, I would certainly like to, to engage you further on that, and, and I can take that up with, with um, the legal counsel, Mark Radcliffe, DLR Piper, who are, who are um, assisting us with that sort of matter. The other matter, of course, is the discussion of, um, that take, takes place for admission of new gold members. That's the one that um, might be um, contentious. Um, I don't know how to address that either, really. One of the things I think is kind of, uh, well, we've had various companies coming. I know there was a lot of controversy about VMware joining. There was a lot of discussion during that executive uh, session um, across the board because there were certain people that were very for VMware being there, certain people that were against it. I sort of was sitting in the middle somewhere thinking, I'm not sure really. Um, so uh, can I follow up on that? Uh, that's my problem. Like, uh, I want uh, the discussion about uh, allowing other com companies to come in. That should be transparent because if I'm going to contribute to OpenStack, I, I would love to know why VMware is either allowed or denied uh, into the uh, project. So I think that should be completely open yeah, and okay. transparent. The, yeah, uh, well, I agree. Like, uh, uh, things, are, things like uh, executive pay and stuff like that, that can be... Uh, Kept, kept confidential, yeah, but that's, uh, that's what allowing other companies to come in, it should be totally transparent. And okay. uh, that's uh, that's what bothers me a lot. Like, well, uh, they shut people down on that. Like, uh, th that bothers me a lot. Okay. Well, certainly, I mean, uh, certainly, the, 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 there is an ongoing discussion about how that's handled. I mean, we've we've done the two ma the two sit-in board members. We had the VMware NEC uh, admission to the first one. We had Eno Events and another company from France. Um, uh, you know. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll have to see what happens on the next board meeting. Um, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, if we can't have that discussion in, in public, um, and I know during those executive sessions there was some fairly heated argument and things that some of those people would be ashamed of, of uh, I guess, <laughs> speaking in public about because they were quite you know, angry, upset, or emotional about various aspects of, of, of the admission of those companies. So that, that needs to be tempered, I guess, and, and that sh probably should be made public, as you say. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
lock-in is one of your mark, you know, kind of thing that adopt, uh, you know, OpenStack. And the other thing is like data being private within the country or whatever you can have an on-premise stuff. But what are the guarantees that today OpenStack cannot make or suffer uh, from making to the customers? Are there any uh, guarantees that you can't make when you go to your customers? Uh, uh, guarantees that you can't make? Yeah. With regards to, say, for instance, Amazon gives a lot of guarantees about, right? Of, they can't give the guarantee that the data will be there in a, in a particular location. You can actually replicate them. Well, but we, we, we do. I actually take customers to our data centers and say, here's your data. It's in any, any one of those racks and any one of those servers, but here it is. Is that, is that the, the kind of guarantee you So look? my question is, what are the guarantees that today OpenStack doesn't have or cannot make using OpenStack? As per yeah. the architecture itself, uh, basically. The question is, as per the architecture itself, on the implementation side, what you have today as OpenStack architecture, are there anything that you can't make to your customers, or can it satisfy you? Uh, there are a few things coming out in the Grizzly Summit with regards to multi-cell NOVA architecture, federated identity, and stuff like that. So as of right now, you can't, you can't, have, you can't guarantee a customer that you can start an instance in any of the availability zones. With Grizzly, that's changing. Uh, some of the other things that are coming out is uh, there are going to be multiple zones inside Swift yeah. geographical regions. Right now, there are, you, can, you can replicate a Swift container across multiple sites using hacks. You, okay. can, do, you can do container re replication, but it's not built into Swift. That is coming. Okay. So these problems are being addressed, uh, and they are being looked at. Uh, I guess because OpenStack has such a fast release cycle, uh, I think six months from the time that someone raises a point, okay. it's already been tested in three, three dot releases or three beta releases, and by the time it comes out, it's very stable. So Swift is one of the most stable components of OpenStack. So look, there is work being done around yeah. availability and zones and stuff like that. Uh, I guess the only place where OpenStack falls down is metering and billing, and that's being worked on as well. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. The answer to your question would be yes, uh, there are some constraints, mm -hmm. and we do tell, tell them to the 